Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, a couple of emails. We'll start this. This is a short one. I mentioned in a previous video that I was doing some landscaping around what it would take to, you know, what, what cash would be needed to buy one of the smaller indie comic companies to kind of do a kickstart on things. Not Kickstarter, but just get some get some things moving faster. There's some advantages to that uh, because you just you'd inherit some established uh, yeah, contracts and, and relationships and that would save some time. Um, also that for whatever reason, a uh, number of comic creators, uh, they, they would rather, um, I don't know what's the best way to say this. They would, they would rather support or join, or, you know, if you come to a comic creator, this, this is okay. So let me, let me back up a little bit. I've gone to some comic creators and said, Hey, I've got money, money uh, that is, you know, good money, you know, money that I know is more per page than, than you're making in these, you know, where you're currently at. I, I will pay you and uh, I'll even give you favorable terms. We'll give you a lot of money up front. Um, this is what I will do for you. And the, the creator is like, nah, I, don't, I haven't heard of this company. Yet if I came and I said, hi, I'm from, you know, Scout Comics. You've heard of Scout and I'm going to offer you, uh, I don't know, 25% less now because I say I'm coming from Scout. You'd be like, all right, I'll do the job. It's, it's weird. It's just that they, you know, I, I get leaning on a company name, uh, to do this kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, it, it, um, it, it, in theory, it's a good idea, but when a lot of those company names are struggling, maybe not a good idea. Anyway, I've been, I've been looking at that. Uh, but what I've surprised is, you know, you get some assets certainly with the purchase, but you also get a lot of debt. It's what's, what was surprising and dis disappointing, I guess the best way to put it is how much debt exists um in these companies so if you know in many cases they'd welcome a sale because you'd buy out the debt and then it'd be your debt and that that's uh that's a disappointment anyway got this uh mail it says uh, hey perch <laughs> if you buy any indie comic company please make it bad idea please put all those comics out in mass market trades pay extra if it will keep dinesh from trying to innovate in comics again thanks for considering it <laughs> I, a bad idea is uh, I mean, it's a strategy and I'm a big fan of disruption and innovation, but, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to talk too much. Well, you know, I it, look at, I think as somebody who thinks a lot about innovation, what bad idea is doing, I don't think is innovative. They're doing marketing stunts, but I, I you know, I, I, I don't, I, eh, yeah. Anyway, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I struggle a lot. It's it's a shame. I, I would rather see. I would I would definitely rather see uh, something going on there. But but anyway. Um, anyway, here's here's another mail, and this is the main thrust of it. So you know, get your get your like get your time stamp now for when the video actually starts. It says uh, they were successfully creatively, but did they make any money? Ah, good question. In the answer, I, I'm not even reading the mail. Mini did not. But let's see what it, where we go with this. It says uh, hi, hi. I've been sorting through a lot of my oversized collection, magazines like Starlog, Future. Oh, man, that's bringing back some memories. Before there was fandom on the Internet, there were fan magazines, and I miss them. God, me too. And among them, there were Marvel Fanfare, Savage Sword of Conan, uh, Tomb of Dracula, Howard the Duck. By the way, big congratulations to, to Jim Zub for uh, landing the Conan gig over at Titan. That's uh, that's awesome. Um, anyway, back to Bill. There are oversized black and white comics that I remember from the late 70s. I bought them. I bought them. It's what you meant. I bought them, and I really think now that uh, talking char taking characters from the color to the black and white freed them up a lot. Um, I agree. I think Stolchek uh, was not your friend there. It, it, it auto-corrected some things. So, uh, But you're right. I do think that there are definitely some characters and some stories and some uh, moments where by going black and white, it, it, it was just a far better idea. And I think that holds true today. And today, I think people are fooling around with black and white in that um, black, white, and red kind of gimmick that they're doing a lot lately. Um, I, I, that's another one where the idea probably started out good. You know, we're going to free up some creators, uh, but it's it's yeah, we're we're far from there now. Anyway, um, it, but the mail continues. I don't mean just the nudity, hmm, okay, but I'm not going to say that wasn't a big draw for me. Well. <laughs> I, I hear you. I hear you. I was. I, I remember this. I was the same. Um, but uh, I, but story wise, and the way they just handled the art. Yes, I don't think anyone but Gene Colan could have drawn Tomb of Dracula better. The black and white and the size gave them a lot of freedom, and the range of stories were greater. Those are some excellent, 
excellent stories. Um, not the cheapest to find in back issues, but man, if you have some cash and you're looking to go somewhere in the back issue market that isn't as, uh, as, as well, you know, exposed, some of those black and white, uh, you know, fanfare, fan magazine, they, God, they're so good anyway. But do you know if they made any real money? I tend to think not since they didn't last too long, but this may have been because they were more for the newsstands. They were vanishing at the time. And I don't know if it would have been hard to get them into the comic book specialty stores that were starting up then. Do you know anything about this? Actually, okay, so I thought you were going to talk about creators. So that's a video for another time of, of some of the creators who uh, were heralded as being very creative. Did they make money? The answer is no. Uh, with these comics, also mostly no, but for a very different reason than what you say. So when a lot of these were coming out, uh, there were definitely some direct market stores, but the newsstand was, was in full swing. It was doing okay. Um, and I, I think a lot of the money and the, uh, more importantly, the growth where the eyeballs were, where people were seeing this stuff was coming from the newsstand. But the challenge is kind of, as you mentioned, the black and white magazines often had, uh, grittier violence and nudity and they were black and white. So a number of the newsstand, uh, locations passed on them. They didn't, they didn't sell them. They didn't sell them because, you know, the guy in, Albertsons didn't want for, you know, a parent to come up to the manager and going, why is this smut over here in the, in the newsstand aisle next to the Cosmo and the Vogue, uh, where it talks about how to, you know, yeah, anyway, I won't, you get the, you get the hypocrisy here, but that's, there was, there was some of that. So some of these comics came out, Conan in particular, and they went out to the newsstand, they went out to, and then very slowly, but surely a lot of those comics started to be weeded out from the orders because they, you know, you, you, Conan would, would drag a woman around and she's got no top on and, and, uh, they, you know, the parents would complain and then they would, you know, say, I don't want this one. And then when in the newsstand, when they, they dropped a comic, it was definitely more devastating because you're not talking about a single location. That's not how comics were ordered. And that's not how the newsstand operated. If you had Safeway, the comics were ordered for Safeway, the, the corporation, or rather the distribution centers. There were some differences based on where you were in the country. But basically, many stores are getting the same order. Basically, we're sending you, you know, 30 copies of, you know, Avengers and Alf and Conan. And that's that's just what you're getting. You didn't have the opportunity if you were the store manager to say, no, no, I want more, you know, less Alf, more Spider-Man. You didn't, you couldn't do that. You were just given what you're given. And so when uh, these comics would come out, and they, they would feature nudity and, and things. And then, you know, somebody would catch wind of it. Um, and then they'd cancel it from the order. You're talking about, you know, suddenly like 20,000 drop out of circulation. Probably not that many, but that, that's an exaggeration. But anyway, just thousands of comics suddenly, poof, gone. The direct market would have been better for these comics by a mile because they had the ability to order more specifically, to probably to cater to a different audience, to put this stuff behind the counter if necessary, or at least, you know, do a better job of guarding uh, kids against it where you might get an angry parent. Whereas the newsstand, you know, you, you really don't have this option. So that's, that's a big way. They, they were not, they weren't financially successful. They were amazing showcases, but the biggest reason they weren't financially successful is because you know, of this. And we have one more reason, one more kind of big, important reason. Again, back almost same source, the people who are ordering these comics for the newsstand, who are ordering them in, in mass, would also go, this comic isn't in color. So it's cheaper, right? That's the way they would think. Keep in mind that the people who are, you know, handling the periodicals for Safeway are, you know, they're not comic collectors. They do not care about Gene Colan. I mean, from, from their standpoint, you know, you could put, you know, Guy down the street or Jack Kirby on a comic. It's all the same to them. They're just... They're just filling out the, the magazine rack because that's their job. Very few of them had any idea what was being sold or who was involved and didn't care. But one thing they did know was kind of the as aspects of the book. So they would go, hey, uh, you know, black and white should be cheaper than color. Therefore, this comic should be cheaper. And yet it's, it's, oversized, it's a bigger size. And in some cases, those comics were more. So it was confusing to them. And, and they felt like, uh, I mean, there were arguments around the time around of people going, you know, like, well, I should get a rebate or a discount. I'm ordering some of the black and white books to put up with the color books. And 
customers aren't going to like that without, co I mean, that, that's just, that was how the thinking went. So these books were, you know, had a number of things working against them, even though, as you say, and accurately, um, the art inside of some of these things and the story and being freed up to do more with black and white was beautiful. I mean, just absolutely brilliant uh, comics. And, and yet, you know, the, these reasons did cause, and, you know, did cause an issue with them. So that's, that's kind of more or less what's, uh, you know, what, what's gone on. That's, that's the story there. So, you know, I hope that helps. Um, best, best piece of advice I can give you is, is go to your comic shop, you know, search out some of these, you'll find some, some incredible gems in there of just really good detailed art. And I think there is a big secret for how comic companies can do you know, more with black and white. I mean, some of the line detail, some of the other, the mood that you can do, like if you're, um, I don't know if you're image and a boom, I, I don't know, somebody, and you should launch a couple horror comics, you know, two or three and just commit to black and white and pick an artist. That's like incredible line detail, just, you know, where the pages just look beautiful. Um, and just roll with it for a while. See what that would do. Create this kind of pulpy horror black and white book. I think that'd be pretty, be pretty awesome. Anyway, thank you very much for the mail. Let me know your thoughts. Do you guys remember these issues? They were great. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.